Yes, Lord. Amen. Father God, we thank you this morning thank you. for allowing us to stand up. We thank you for the breath of life. We thank you for the gift of salvation. We thank you that you care about us and that you are for us. Father, I ask that this moment, this day, this morning, you would again use my brother, Ren, and uh, Yun. You would cause them to go forth. You would allow them. You would use them mightily for your glory. You would use them to make you look good. You would use them to do what you want done and what you have called them to do. Give them strength. Give them today what they need. Give, their, give them strength. Allow the Holy Spirit to come upon them and speak what you want them to speak. Give their voices strength to proclaim what you have put on their hearts. Father God, we beg you. We beg for your Holy Spirit right now to come down upon this place. Father, you have said that you will give if we ask and we ask in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this divine opportunity and this divine connection. This opportunity to hear from you through our Chinese brother and, and uh, or brothers. And we ask, Lord, that our hearts would be open to receive everything that you've given and that you are giving and you're pouring out through them. We ask that you're, you would speak through them your words of life and that uh, their tongues would be loosened and they would speak whatever you give to them to speak. They would not hold back, but they would bring it forth in power and in the anointing of God in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity, Lord God, to gather Hallelujah. together with my brothers from China, Father. Thank you, God, that you've brought them, you've raised them up, Lord, as an, ex an, as an example to us, Father God, of what you can do with willing hearts that are ready to serve you. And now today, Father God, I pray for an open heaven, Lord. I pray for an open heaven over this place, an open heaven over their lives. Father, I pray you would speak directly to them, Lord God. You would just fill them overflowing with your word, Lord God. Hallelujah. Father, I bless them. Thank you, Father God, for their faithfulness to serve you, Lord God, and their willingness to come all the way to America and all the way over here, Lord God, for such a time as this, Lord God. Thank you for this divine moment, Lord God, that you have orchestrated, Lord God, you brought together. And I bless them. I speak the blood of Jesus over them. And I speak, I just ask that you would give them a fresh word. Hallelujah. A word of boldness, a word of courage Hallelujah. would come forth. Hallelujah. They would not care what anyone else thinks, but they would only care what you think, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Amen. Do you want me to use this one? If you want, yeah. Yeah, we'll put it on. Is it on now? Yeah. Amen. Amen. We greet you all in the name of Jesus. Now, I am compelled by the Holy Spirit to do something special this morning. So now each one of you are going to start to speak to yourself. And you're going to use some statements to yourself. First of all, I want you to use your right hand. And clap yourself on your heart on the left side, if you don't know where it is. It's right here. And you say this to your heart, I am precious. I am precious. And I am important. I am important. And I am, loved by God. I am loved by living God. I am accepted by living God. There is nothing wrong with me. Because I am in Jesus Christ. Amen. So do you know what you are? I am precious. And I am priceless. I'm so precious. And you are so precious. That God was willing to sacrifice his son for your salvation. And God was willing to be in Christ and crucify himself so that you and I 
may live life that is worth living. None of you are any outcast anymore. Absolutely not. We are all one in Jesus Christ. We belong to this global body of Jesus Christ. The temple, the holy temple, that God has promised that the latter, latter temple, cl temple's glory is going to be greater than the first one. Amen. So get ready for good times. Get ready for more of God's glory upon your life. And get ready to be obedient. It's very important to hear the word of God. But it is as important, if not even more important, for us to obey what the Lord speaks to us. And you know, the Lord usually speaks to us things that we don't want to hear. And that's why we forgot them so easily. Because it's unpleasant, it's challenging, and He seems to have a tendency to stretch us all the time. He's never satisfied of our level of faith. He's never satisfied of the presence of the glory upon us because He wants to fill us overflowing. Amen? And that overflow is mean to become something, and it is something that is in, will come out from us and is so packed with God's presence that it will start to influence our neighborhood, our neighbors, our families, our uh, extended family. They start, to see, they start to see Jesus in us. Now this morning I will uh, share you something uh, what is happening in a house of Buddha. And uh, when I say this, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, my target is to share what God is doing in this, these countries where Buddhism is uh, the religion and people are worshipping Buddha as their God, as their Lord. And uh, because in China we believe that Buddha is not the Lord. Amen. That was a good amen right there. And we also believe that none of the millions of Hindu gods is the Lord. The Lord. Amen. And we also believe that Muhammad is not the Lord. None of these images and idols are the Lord. Because there is only one Lord and we have privilege to know Him. And His name is what? Jesus. Amen. Jesus is the Lord. And that's why we want every person who lives on the, in this world to know that there is only one Lord and His name is Jesus Christ. There's only one God who was so great and so superior that He was willing to die for our sins. And through that process, He, is, he has prepared salvation for our sins, deliverance from our sins. There's only Jesus. There is Jesus and nothing else. Amen. Amen. And I really want you to be as excited about Jesus as the Chinese believers are. Jesus is everything for them. And they would do everything to obey everything Jesus have told them. So that they one day may hear, like the brothers were sharing earlier, you good and faithful servant. Your level of goodness, your level of faithfulness is always measures how much of Jesus 
is in you and is coming from your life to the world. The people do not see Jesus unless we show them Jesus. Amen? This is as simple as it is. God has not any more going to send Jesus in any other shape as than you and I. We are called to be little Jesuses wherever we are, extraying Jesus to everybody. Now, uh, this is uh, uh, the story about uh, the gospel starting to uh, touch the uh, uh, center of presence, uh, the presence of Buddhism goes like this. Now you know that up in Himalaya, uh, the presence of uh, Buddhism is very, very strong. I remember the first time going to Lhasa, Tibet, which is the very epicenter of Buddhism. Potala Palace, Potala Temple, which is on the mountainside just outskirt of, uh, uh, of Lhasa, Tibet, the capital of Tibet. That is the, the place uh, where most of the uh, uh, Lamas, Dalai Lamas, has been educated and they come out from that institution. And the presence of darkness is so strong in uh, Tibet because of this one simple reason, there are so many thousands and tens of thousands of people who are worshipping Buddha 24-7 every day. And I don't know if you have heard this, but every elderly Buddhist person, no matter where they are, they have a dream and a vision about their last days on the earth. They want to please Buddha. And what they do to the end of their lives, when they are, when we, many people in the West, they retire, what do they do? They start to make their way from their home towards the temple in Lhasa, towards the Potala temple. And what way do they travel? They don't travel with their horses. They don't travel with cars. They don't even walk. They take one step like this. And then they kneel down and they go on their faces and they pray. And then they stand up again and they take one step. And they may travel like this hundreds of miles. And their only hope is... That when I reach to the front the presence of the temple, so that I can see the temple, that that would be my last step, and I will die. Then I'm a successful follower of Buddha. So everywhere along the highways in Tibet, you see people doing this. One feet at the time, ground on, the, on, the, on their faces, all the dirt of passing by cars and buses will be on the face. It may be raining, it will be snowing. They just pray and they, they take one step at a time. Their religion is squeezing out all life from them. And I'm 100% sure that the heart of Jesus is bleeding. Look at these people. Why, why nobody has gone and shared about me? They don't know that their sins already been forgiven. They don't know anything about me. I'm the savior of the whole world, including the Buddhist world. Why there's nobody going and sharing the gospel to them? I'm sharing one story, a testimony of a Chinese missionary. 
This uh, dear sister, uh, she, I know her very well. She has been uh, in the ministry since she was about 12 years old. And uh, uh, we have big numbers of very powerful, very powerful ministers of the world in China uh, who are women. Now, I don't know how this fits to this audience, but I have to be honest, more than 70% of our Bible teachers and our evangelists are women in China. For that simple reason that most of the men during the past years of atheist communist regime, they were always looking what are the men doing and it was very difficult for the men to travel anywhere in China. But the women who were unmarried, they were able to go everywhere and they were preaching the gospel. So this sister was one of those from age of 12, she has been ministering and leading thousands of people to the Lord Jesus, establishing many, many churches all over the central China. And then somewhere, uh, the time, because China is changing, and it became more and more difficult as a single woman to continue in the ministry. She felt, I, I, have, to, uh, I have to find a husband. And God led, the, uh, she found a husband, and they got married. And they settled to uh, the province of Liaoning, uh, which is in one of the Manchurian provinces in northeast of China. And they started uh, to build their life together as a new wed couple in the city of Shenyang. And they were 100% on the fire for Jesus. Lord Jesus, we want to continue to serve you together. The husband was a believer, he was a follower of Jesus, and the wife was this uh, dear sister. After they'd been married just a couple of weeks, and everything was so wonderful, now I'm not alone anymore. Uh, she was already almost 30 years old, and she was so happy. Now I'm going to build up my own family and we will continue to serve the Lord here. And it's perfectly legal. It's perfectly all right. Unless God have a special purpose for your lives. Wherever we are and we don't have any special revelation of anything, we just should do the regular thing to share Jesus to people that we are. And she was doing that. But about a few years later, one morning when this sister was praying, and she was honestly praying early in the morning, she heard the voice of Jesus very clearly. Sister, I need you in Lhasa, Tibet. Go to Lhasa, Tibet. And that was the last thing she wanted to hear. And she said, Lord, here I am. Send somebody else. Lord, I'm just married. We are supposed to build a family together. I cannot go to Tibet. And she shake her head and she just prayed and then she was a whole day she was thinking about this. Next morning she was praying again and meditating before the Lord. And even stronger she heard the same voice. Sister, I need you in Tibet. I have a mission for you in Tibet. And she was totally confused. Lord, we are here in Shenyang. We are going to work for you. We are from morning to evening. We are going to share to everybody. We are going to establish the biggest church in China for you here. But Lord, no, don't force me to go to Tibet. Next morning, she started to pray again. And she knew what is coming. She hardly kneeled down before the Lord. Sister, what's wrong with you? I told you I need you in Tibet. Go to Tibet. And then she found a solution. 
She said, Lord, what about? This morning, I will tell about this to my husband. And I tell her, Lord want us to go to Tibet. And if he agrees, Lord, we will go together. And everything is all. And she looked up and said, Lord, is this okay? And she kind of felt that this should be okay. And he had nothing from the Lord. So next same morning she prepared a good Chinese breakfast for her husband and said, Honey, I have good news for you. The Lord spoke to me. He's been speaking to me already two uh, mornings, three mornings. And Lord want us to go to Tibet. And the husband was in a state of shock. Woman, what are you talking about? Have you lost your mind? Have you ever read the newspapers? Haven't you heard the news? What are they doing to Chinese? If Chinese walk on the streets in Lhasa, they will kill you. Have you heard what has been happening? The uprising, tens of Chinese being stoned to death in Tibet. And now you are saying that God wants us to go there. Over my dead body. I am not going to go. The Lord has not said anything to me. I will stay here. And he was so upset. And he was almost ready to give up the marriage. He said, you are crazy. We are not going to have. You think we are supposed to build our family and serve the Lord here. What in the world do we do in Tibet? No, we are, my family is not going to go to Tibet. And the Lord, sister was looking up. Jesus, did you hear that? It didn't work. Next morning, she went to prayer again. Very, very happily. And she started to praise the Lord for solution to the problem. And the Lord listened to everything she had to say. And then the Lord said, Sister, nothing is changed. I need you in Tibet. And finally, after three weeks, of a reminder and this really tells me that God is extremely patient with us so don't think that I was running so fast and Jesus spoke so I, I didn't catch it he will catch you I guarantee he will catch you so finally this sister she decided there is no way I have to be obedient. If I want to keep God's anointing upon my life, if I want to make any difference for God's kingdom, I have to go. So one morning, very early, she wrote a letter to her husband who was still sleeping and said, My dear husband, I love you so much and I would rather stay here with you than anywhere else. But Jesus is compelling me I have to go to Tibet I don't know what is going to be my mission there but I promise I will pray I will fast I will work hard so as soon as possible my my mission is finished I will come back to you and I pray that you are still waiting for me when I come back and she took an only uh, an early bus and she started to travel from Shenyang towards Lhasa, Tibet. It took about two weeks for her to arrive to Lhasa, Tibet. And I I don't think there has ever been more motivated missionary in any location than this woman was. Because she absolutely wanted to know immediately, God, what is the mission? What do you want to do through me here so that I can return back home as soon as possible? So every day she was walking on the main streets of Lhasa, Tibet. And she was praying, she was interceding, and she was fighting a good fight. And she was asking, Jesus, what is my mission? And one day she saw a, a pile of old 
uh, carpets, uh, rocks, and 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 gilts, and and sh- there there was e- obviously a person sitting inside, invisible. The only thing that was visible was a hand that came out from inside that pile, and uh, obviously somebody was begging something. And as the people pass by. And the Buddhist people, they give always uh, some help if somebody is begging. So that every time somebody put the money here, the hand disappeared. And then after a little while, it came back empty. And this sister, she was passing by. And as she had passed about this far from the pile, she heard the voice of the Holy Spirit saying to her very firmly, go back and hug the person who is inside the pile. And she said, Lord, I don't even know if it's a man or woman. I don't know what's the problem. <laughs> Obviously, that person wants to be undercover. So, Lord, I'll pray for, I, for, I pray for that pile right here, powerfully. I bless them in the name of Jesus. And the Lord said to her, no, go there, kneel down, and hug the person inside. So she went there, she removed the top of the pile, and she saw the face of a young Tibetan woman, which has totally been destroyed by leprosy. She could see the bones on her face, and the only part of her body that was not affected by leprosy was that one hand that came out. Four years earlier, this young woman who had been living far away up on Himalaya in her home village, it was discovered that she got the first white spot of leprosy. And in, within four years, the leprosy has eaten her flesh into the bone in different parts of her body. And in China, you become an outcast immediately. And that separation is much tougher than it was you to leave the, the Amish church. You are totally disgrace to everybody. Nobody wants to have anything to do. And for four years, during the night time, this woman had been moving closer and closer to Lhasa Tibet because she knew the only place where I can survive if I'm able to be in the street corner and beg and not not anybody to know who is inside that pile. And when this sister, she had to kind of make a decision and unless you are there, if I would bring it closer to you, it's as difficult to hug a person with full-blown leprosy as it would be you to go and hug somebody who is in the hospital and has a full-blown AIDS. It's as difficult. But this sister, she heard, Jesus said, this woman is your missus. This is why I send you to Lhasa Tibet. Now, Hug her and then bring her to your house. She had rented a little tiny room and that's where she was living. And the Lord said, tonight when it's dark, bring her to your house and take care of her and pray with her and take oil and put on her body and pray for her every day. This is your mission. And she was very, very caring and passionate. She poured out her life, everything to this woman. In the beginning, this Tibetan lady, young girl, she had, she, she had never heard a kind word coming from any Chinese. She hated Chinese. They, they, the Tibetan people, they think all the misery of their life is coming from Chinese. It was so 
much hatred in her heart. But then she started to recognize and experience this special, this Chinese woman is totally different to any other Chinese I ever have met in my life. She, she is all the time in tears when she is uh, taking care of me. She is feeding me. And she is just so good to me. A little by little, the love of Jesus Christ that was flowing out from this missionary woman, it started to affect the heart of this uh, woman who was completely sick in leprosy. About three, four weeks later, after this sister has been praying, uh, laying hands, praying, every time she was touching her body and putting on that oil and, and, and uh, things that uh, were needed and washing away the rotten flesh uh, from her body, she prayed, Jesus, touch this woman, heal her for your glory, have mercy upon this woman. But she did that silently, not shouting to her in any way, just serving that woman by the silently in her spirit, calling upon the name, upon name of Jesus. About three, walks, uh, three, four weeks later, early one morning, the missionary was waking up by a screaming. And this woman, this Tibetan woman, was screaming with fullness of her voice. And she, then, and she was saying something in Tibetan language. And the missionary did not know a word of Tibetan language. But the woman was just screaming and screaming. And then she stood up from her bed. And to a biggest surprise of the, for the missionary, she recognized that that woman has been, during the night, been completely healed by Jesus, and the leprosy is gone. And it was, it was so beautiful, suddenly... The missionary saw, standing there in front of her eyes, 23 years old, beautiful Tibetan girl, completely restored and having a skin like a little baby. She was so beautiful. And the Tibetan girl said to the missionary, this is all about your Jesus. Your Jesus have healed me. And I want to receive Jesus as my Lord into my life. And it was a beautiful moment when the missionary and the healed Tibetan girl, they kneeled down and she became a disciple of Jesus Christ. The very same day, they didn't delay the, delay the repart, departure even, even one day. They decided, let's make a way back to her home village. And let so everybody know what is happening when Jesus come uh, into a person's life. So it was a wonderful afternoon after they'd been traveling more than four hours on the bus. And they arrived to the, uh, uh, to the uh, mountain road. I started to walk towards that mountain village up, up in the mountains. And uh, as they came closer to the village, people started to come out from their houses. Because they all recognized that Tibetan girl who is coming back towards the village, that is the same girl we cast out from this village four years ago. And they only shouted one word, who did this? Who did this? What, how is it possible you don't have leprosy anymore? Who did this? Who did this? And the girl and the missionary said, they gave all glory to Jesus. It was Jesus, the Son of living God. And that very same afternoon, 22 people received Lord Jesus as their Savior and Lord. Amen. God is building His church, even up in the Himalaya mountains. And today, we have even former Buddhist temples 
in the Himalaya where all the monks has become disciples of Jesus Christ. They still stay and live in the, uh, in the, uh, in the monastery. And they still study, but they don't study the writings of Buddha anymore. They study the living word of God. The house of Buddha is changing for the glory of God. But many hundred, many thousands of villagers are still looking for Jesus and needs messengers like you and I to go and bring the gospel to them and to go and bring the gospel, as we said, all the way back to Jerusalem. And now it's my joy to invite Brother Un, my blood brother, to come and share the word with us. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus has already risen from dead. Amen. Um, and now, once again, let's, uh, let's exercise. Let's stand up and say to one another in Chinese, Yesu Aini. Jesus yeah. loves you. Uh, Yesu Aini. Amen. 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 And please be seated in peace. Don't be afraid. Jesus has already resurrected from dead. And don't allow your past to hinder you uh, uh, for this uh, great future that you have in Jesus Christ. And uh, it doesn't matter if in the past you have been successful or you have been in total failure. It doesn't matter because the resurrection power of Jesus Christ will give you a new tomorrow. Amen. Amen. I hope any passage in the Bible that I love, it would be one of these the brothers were referring, they have overcome through the blood of the Lamb. That is the most precious Bible verse for me myself. Amen. Amen. Do you still continue, do you still continue to believe that the Bible is the living word of God and it's able to change us? Amen. 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 Uh, so let's uh, stand up together and read the word of God. And let's read from uh, uh, the Gospel of John and let's go to the word, chapter uh, 21, the last chapter. Mm. And uh, uh, it's uh, Gospel of John, chapter 21, and verse 1 to 7. Afterwards, Jesus appear, appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also called, known as Dithymus, Nathanael from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and the two other disciples were together. I am going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, well, go, we'll go with you. So they went out and, and got into the boat, but it, that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood at, on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you, uh, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. And when they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of the fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off and jumped 
into the water. Amen. Let's be seated in peace. It's very important not to allow your past failures to hinder you today. Now, there's something similar with all of us. You, I, and the disciples in, uh, of Jesus. We all have let Jesus down in our lives. We all have failed in the past. But remember, the reason why you believe in Jesus and love Jesus is not because you came up to that yourself. It was because the great love of God made you love Jesus. It doesn't matter how weak you are, how big failure you are, if you have a desire to receive more of Jesus, you are at the right place today. When the Lord appears to you, everything will be changed. And uh, we know that the background of this uh, story was that Peter had really failed Jesus. He had denied Jesus. And he had, he had already totally given up. I do not qualify to be called his disciples because I was the most vocal to deny Jesus. And then he decided, I better return to my old uh, trade and I go back fishing. And uh, he failed big time. And early in the morning, Jesus said, Friends, do you have something to eat? Do you got any fish? Now, the good thing was that Jesus was speaking to, to Simon Peter. Because whenever Jesus starts to speak to somebody, his words carries the power of transformation and change for our lives. And uh, the, the disciples were honest, we haven't gotten one fish. And Jesus' solution was so unbelievable. He just said, you throw the nets on the right hand side of the boat and you get it. And when they obeyed the voice coming from the shore and they throw the net, it, it was so packed with fish that they hardly were able to pull it up into the boat. I have had all these days, I have been among you brothers and sisters. I've been praying, Lord, continue to speak to us. Continue to challenge and change us. And yesterday I was talking about the five bread and two fishes. They were the lunch for that one boy. And how Jesus took that and blessed. Now here, it's amazing. At the same time as Jesus was asking the disciples, do you have any fish? And they came with the fish that they, have, uh, they got after Jesus de- commanded them to go and, and throw the net. And they were, uh, they were surprised because there were fish and there were bread on the fire already. And this really tells us 
the reality of kingdom of God. It's not only Jesus doing something. He wants us to be his partners, his co-workers, that we will, whatever we got, we will bring to the same fire and we, it will be mixed with that what Jesus is already providing. 他告诉门徒说：“你们把你们自家打出来的鱼拿一条，不要吃过去我预备的，现在最新鲜的。”And Jesus said, "Bring in some fresh fish and put them on the fire. Together with these fishes, I have already prepared for you." 我想大家很熟悉，有汉在查鱼的时候，哇，一百五十三条大鱼，王没有破。and the Bible tells, because one of the disciples counted this big fish, and he said there were 153 of them. Now I have a question to you. How many of you would be happy if today God start to do special uh, things in your life and you will get the catch of your life you will get 153 big fishes for God. Amen and the good news was it doesn't matter that there were so many fishes but the net did not broke 有人可能是不是你在讲什么成功啊？我要带到什么东西？不，有很多人成功了，他跟神之间的关系破了，婚姻之间的关系破了。And now you are thinking, oh, now Brother Yun is giving us a key to a success. That whatever we do, it's always going to be the full catch, and it's no broken net. There are so many people who are so successful in Kingdom of God, but they. They don't have that anymore, that relationship with Jesus. And that's I'm going to talk about. 我在美国不少的地方服侍, 我看见有很多人很成功, I have met so many successful servants of the God. Uh, and they, uh, they are successful in the ministry. But their children, all of them, have turned their back to God. And they are not following God anymore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have a personal testimony, and most of my testimonies, the most powerful ones, they start always when I'm at the lowest point of my life and everything is gone. Everything is just complete mess. 我第一次在做监的时候, when I was uh, uh, first time in prison in 1980s, uh, and during my first year in the prison, my son Isaac was born. Uh, they had sent me for lifetime imprisonment, but suddenly, four years later, they changed that and they released me after four years in the prison. And uh, uh, then I was able to uh, continue to preach the gospel for less than two years, and then they captured me again. And they throw me to the prison. And now, because according to the authorities, I was an unrepenting criminal. I have repeated the same crime I have been in the prison previously. So they had so many conditions, they had so many rules. You are not able, you cannot do this, that, and that. And it was very firm. One of the first things they said, if any other prison ask you in the prison, what is your crime? Why are you here? They said, I have to sign a paper saying, I am not going to tell them that I'm here for the sake name of the cheese. And they said to me, if you even say one time the name Jesus in the prison, uh, immediately
immediately we will handcuff you and we will put uh, chains uh, uh, in your legs and be thrown into the cellar to that very uh, low uh, 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 cell. Solitary cell. And I, I, that was a great challenge to me. So I started to pray, Lord, I really expect you to interfere. I really need you to come to my misery. And I was thinking about that if Jesus had so much compassion towards Peter that he was able, he came and and uh, and met with Peter and changed his life. Lord, have same mercy upon you, upon me, Lord. Come to me. I need you. This is going to be most difficult time in my life. And you have to understand that the calling upon my life was to go and witness about Jesus and preach about Jesus. And now that they forbid me even mention the name of Jesus, that was the great pain on me. And the, the reason why they were so tough towards me was because they had heard the rumors what happened in the previous prison when I became so bold and I led all the prisoners to, to be followers of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have to understand that no matter how tough our circumstances are, the ways of the Lord are so much higher to our ways, and His thoughts are so much higher. He has always His good purpose for our lives. And, uh, uh, again in this prison there were about 800 prisoners and they were looking at me and they somehow they figure out that I'm really happy I'm really peaceful I'm totally different to everybody else and I said why have they why have they captured why is this man in this prison and of course the prisoners uh, they every day they were talking they were they missed so much their life their families and their parents so they were or in tears they were telling uh, stories about their lives and uh, one day they came to me and they said uh, what, what, what did what, 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 who are your father and mother? What, what did they do? And they said, what have you been doing in the past? You have to tell us something. You haven't told anything about yourself. And I had already recognized that this, uh, there were so many sicknesses in their bodies. Everybody had some sickness in that prison. And uh, the government, of course, the government did not care about that. There were, uh, there were no medicine available for them to, uh, to help them. And suddenly I remember that when Jesus was walking on this earth, he always entered into people's suffering, into their sicknesses, and he started to set them free through his power. And the Lord reminded to me that uh, these are the signs that will follow those who believe. He did not say those who are able to speak. It is follow those who believe. So they were pushing me, what is your father's occupation? What is he doing? What is your mother doing? And I said, my father is the doctor above all the doctors. 
，当他，哈利路亚。当他们提到我的爸爸的医生的时候。And when they heard that my father is the best doctor in the world, and all these sick criminals, they started uh, prisoners. They come to, they came to me, and they were begging, they were begging me to help. China has a saying called "Zhu Chuan Mi Feng." Ah, your parents have no. In China, there's a saying that、uh, that you have a good tree, and the honey can be found in, on that tree because if you are son of a good tree, you can do the same thing as your the tree is doing. 那我们这有个病没有药，这能不能够治病？我说治病不一定都要吃药。And they said to me. Uh, you, you, you are son of a good doctor. Is there any healing, any help? We don't have any medicine, but is there any help for us? I said, anyone can be healed without medicine. It's possible. 当我一提到我父亲是医生的时候，哇，很多人就开始有病人来找我，就是来求求你来帮个忙吧。我这是出不来去呀、啊，我这身上疼啊。They started to come here. They were lining into my cell, and they had breathing problems, and they had ache, they had pain here and pain there. And they say, well, would you mind to help us? Help us? This is so horrible. 因为中国人呢，很相信那种气功啊，还有那个针灸啊。As you know, the Chinese they Love this、uh, pressure massage, qi gong,、uh, and all. They believe everything is released、uh, when there is、uh, an expert doing that. 或者给人按摩，按摩的鼻子要手要按到上面。And and also to receive a massage. And the good thing about massage, you get access to the people. You can lay your hands on the people when you give them massage. My biggest problem, because everything else was ready and I was ready to move, but they have forbidden me to do that in the name of Jesus. Ah, 弟兄说讲的是很对的，弟兄胜过的是见着羔羊的血和我们说见证的道，可是他不让你讲道啊。Uh, but you know, it was so good if I would only been able to release those powerful words in the name of Jesus through the blood of the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. It would be all okay, and I would be perfectly、uh, operative. 那是圣灵就放在我里头，有四个字叫哈利路亚。And that was the moment when the Holy Spirit reminded me about another word, Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. These two words, Amen, Hallelujah. No. 那个经他没有，他只说不要奉讲耶稣，他没有说不要讲哈利路亚，讲阿门。They forgot to forbid me to say and sign the paper not to say hallelujah, amen. They only said don't say the name of Jesus. 那我就开始跟他们按手的时候，我说我给你们按的时候来，捏的时候如果痛的时候，你都给我哈哈。And I said, when I start to give you massage and it start to hurt, you just release your voice. Said, ha ha, hallelujah, 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 yeah, yeah, amen, amen, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah. Because I have to have the hard way. I said, hallelujah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I explain what these words mean, and they totally believed, and they started to repeat. 我说按照舒服的时候，你都跟着我来讲，啊啊，阿门。And when it feels very good, and you feel your blood is running, and it's very pleasant, you said, 啊啊，阿门。Hallelujah! Hallelujah! 很奇妙的事情就这一句话。These two words released wonderful happening. 整个神迹在所有我为人祷告的人身上开始发生。And every person I lay my hands on and I started to uh, to uh, repeat with them these two words, God's power came upon them and they were instantly healed in the name of Jesus. 我没有哈利路亚，哈利路亚。我没有告诉他们我是传道人。I did not say a word that I'm actually an undercover preacher. 我也没有，我也没有跟他们来讲，就是单单就这一句话。I just told them these two words. 
。那个时候的名字整个传开了，犯人开始把问题都传到那个警察那里。And you know, I became quite famous in the prison. And the other prisoners, they sent a message to the warden and to the leadership of the prison. What is happening when I am massaging people? 开始警察来找我说，我听说你的爸爸呃是医生，你有一种太医的奇的功能，可以为人那个治病啊。我这是这个头发真的怎么办？ And the warden and the director, they come to me and they said, "We have heard that your father is very, very famous doctor, and、uh, as you have been giving this qi gong pressure、uh, massage to people, they are completely healed." You 能不能帮我这个忙？我说没有问题，你这个很简单的。And and this warden. They same to, said to me, "Would you mind to massage me? I have so much pain in my body." And I said, "Yes, this is very simple." And you just 配合我哈哈哈利路哈利路。As I give you some pain, you start to say ha ha hallelujah. Amen. Amen. 很奇妙，我就开始来做的时候，那个警察就一个一个的，警察他带到医治的时候，很多的警察都来找我。And when the policeman and the warden started to be healed by shouting Hallelujah and Amen, everybody wanted to come to me in the prison. 神的同在很重要 It's so important that we have God's presence upon our life. 我昨天晚上告诉各位，我们需要神荣耀的同在 That's why I was emphasizing last night. We need that glorious presence of kingdom of God upon us every day. 有神的同在，神的启示随着你的时候，他会找你的。经常突然间来找你的。When you have God's presence in you, you don't need to go look for people. People are looking for you. 那原原本的在那个。监牢里面那个活是很重的，很苦的。都经常说，我现在开始做出一个决定，我们要把你送到教育科里面去，你要负责来教育犯人。And、uh, when God started to do these miracles, the leadership of the prison they make a decision: we are going to transfer you to the meeting hall、uh, of the prison, and that's going to be your office, and people can come to you, and you will serve them there. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! 我在那里就开始能够有机会祷告来亲近神，来读圣经。And I was so relieved because I got this big room all alone, and I was could, was able to concentrate in my prayer to Lord because there was nobody else、uh, except when I allowed them to come to be healed. Because I 我原来没有读过什么书啊，因为要搞教育的时候，中国呢还没有现在那个 computer 啊，是什么没有那么先进的，我必须用手啊来开些那个字啊。And、uh, as I was supposed to be the teacher. Uh, to all the others,、uh, there was a library there, and uh, and uh, uh, and I was able to study、uh, different. I was just every month to help to write the letters to make the letters to make the letters. I was just putting Jesus' gospel in there. And uh, uh, then they,、uh, I was the one who delivers. Occasionally, we get some、uh, newspapers to the prison, and that, when I was delivering them to these uh, uh, prisoners to read, inside、uh, I just wrote. Few words of the gospel into the newspaper and and send them to them because they had not denied me to write anything. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! This is this is my power. It makes me every day to be in the light of the gospel. I have to find a way to put some of the gospel songs in the newspaper. Little by little, I put them in. And I also was the one who was controlling the loudspeakers of the prison, where the music would go. And occasionally, I just step in and I sang a song, a short song, into the loudspeaker from the Word of God, without mentioning name of Jesus. 很奇妙，一天突然之间，这个警察里面的三个科的一个科长，他们就带着一个医生到那个监狱的门口要叫我。One day, a delegation, the leadership of the prison, three men, they came to me, and together they had a doctor. And I, I was shocked. They came to me into my room. 
，我认为可能是不是我放这个复音歌的时候陪他们听到了，现在来找我麻烦。And I was sure that somebody has figured out that those personal singings that I have had, they have actually been scripture songs. 我非常惧怕的，赶快就跑下去。我说到，然后 ，and I I rushed to the the、uh, the recording the equipment and I closed it immediately because I thought it has to do with the song that was going on。然后警察就说：“这是你们这个监狱里面的医生，今天要找你有事，要你来。” and、uh, But the th three warden, they said to me, "This man, he is the he is the the chief doctor of the prison hospital, and he has something important to tell you." I think it's a problem. Maybe I didn't have this document to give to the prisoners. Maybe I didn't have this document to give to the prisoners. Maybe I didn't have this document to give to the prisoners. Maybe I didn't have this document to give to the prisoners. Maybe I didn't have this document to give to the prisoners. Maybe I didn't have this document to give to the prisoners. Maybe I didn't have this document to give to the prisoners. Maybe I didn't have this document to give to the prisoners. 我万万没有想到，竟然哈利路亚这个名字啊，阿门，哈利路亚，他们都整个监牢传开了。这个警察把我的问题告诉给医生说，这个里面的犯人中间有一个人有奇异功能。I could hardly believe what she he said to me. He said, "This warden have told me." That when you are giving this mushers and people are shouting these two words, they are immediately released from their sicknesses. So, 原来是警察让我来帮忙。他的父亲带到一个脑偏瘫，他不能够动的。And then the, this man he shared the, his problem. He said, "My old, my my old father." Who also was a, a doctor. He had a stroke in his brain, and he had been bleeding, and now he is paralyzed at home. 医生说：“你不要怕，我今天是要找你，不是找你麻烦，是要找你帮忙的。”我的父亲有了问题。I was so frightened, and he said, "Don't be afraid. This is good news. I have come to ask you to help and to come to Mashar's, my father." He said, "We whole family, we are all doctors, but none of us have, can have us been able to help my father. He is paralyzed and he is laying on his bed and he cannot move." He immediately went to the judge and left a will and swore that if my father is healed, he will release you immediately. But from today on, you will not be a criminal. You will be able to live in the prison cell. And、uh, then he said, "If you are able to help my father." I promise you that your、uh, your time in the prison will be、uh, reduced, and you will be set free earlier. And also, as thank you to you, I will give you opportunity. You can come to our dining room to eat together with us. 那我必须在警察面前，在医生面前告诉我的真情。我说我不懂气功，我也不是气功。我只为了福音的缘故关到这里。我是个传道人。我说，奉耶稣的名为他们祷告。And I have to tell this foreman the truth. I said, I know nothing about qigong. I know nothing about m a s h e s u s 可是这个医生今天接受了，他没有问题。But the doctor said to me, "It's not the problem how you do it." You, 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 send to my house and just do it there. Ah, after you, come to my home and just do it there. Ah, after you, come to my house and just do it there. Ah, after you, come to my house and just do it there. 那我来到他家里的时候，他派的有警察还看着我，怕我跑掉了。我说你放心，我是有信仰的人，我不会随便离开。And、uh, when they started to transfer me to the home of this doctor, his wonderful home, the three a、uh, warden they absolutely wanted to join, and they said we have to、uh, see that you don't escape. And I said I I'm a believer of Jesus Christ. I am not going to run anywhere. Except if the Lord asks me to go. Oh, I went to his house. This doctor took me to his house. He 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 took me to his house.
I saw that he had already prepared. I saw the table. I saw so many kind of fruit and anything good to eat. Uh, the whole table was overloaded, and he just invited me to come and eat. 可是去之前，我告诉另外一个在监牢里和同坐监的弟兄的时候，我说。啊、oh, ！我现在要去给医生家里为他父亲祷告。他说：“不要怕，你大胆的。我们从今天开始禁食祷告三天。” And I totally regret what had happened for few hours earlier, because when I knew that they going to bring me to his house, I told a couple of other brothers、uh, in my in the prison. I said, "Now I have to go and pray for that sick man in the name of. Would you mind to pray with me?" And the brother said, "Let's make a deal." You You go, and we will pray. We will all now、uh, fast and pray. We don't eat anything. So I joined that pact, and now I came to all that food, and I completely regret it. 同伴很重要啊。It's important that whatever you do, you do it together. Do not do that alone. Look that there are people joining you. 神提恤我，让我在监牢里面也有同伴。I'm so happy because Lord has encouraged me that I always had a, a group of people around me, believers of Jesus Christ. And if they were not, I just make them to believers. So I got some fellowship with them. Hallelujah. So I have already told you we have to fast for three days. But the doctor sitting there, the fruit, I really told you, I have already told you, I have no problem. I had the, the temptation of my life. Because and I saw all that fruit, I didn't know that them even existed in China, and I was not able to eat because of the pact I did with the brothers. 我就告诉医生，告诉警察，我说你们心里不要难过。我现在必须告诉你们，我在上帝的面前许下有个愿，为了你的父亲得到医治，我尽是祷告，我也不吃你们的饭，也不喝你们的水，也不吃。And I have to be honest. I told to this doctor, and he was totally amazed. I said, for the because of.、Uh, Be able to be instrument for God to touch your father. I have decided not to eat and not to drink anything. Don't, don't,、uh, don't be sad about this. It's all for the sake of your father. 那医生给惊他走了，他暗示他的妈妈、爸爸说：“我们走了，他都会吃了。”他是怕我们，没有问题。And、uh, the the policeman who were there and the the the、uh, the son who was there, they were thinking that oh, he's just afraid that he uh, uh, because we are here, so that we will go and、uh, afterward. And, and he said to his mother,、uh, "I'm sure he will eat after we depart." 可是他走了，他妈妈说：“你吃。”我说：“不，你们相信这个世界真的有一位上帝吗？”我就开始给他做见证。我说：“这个病很简单呐、啊，我的父亲是癌症。” And after the son and the policeman has left the room,、uh, and the mother she wanted me to eat, and I said, I, "I'm not eating right now." And then I started to share gospel to them. I asked this old woman, "I said, 'Do you believe that God exists?'" 哇，老人家就开始说：“我们相信，只要我们好，我们相信。”我说：“不是好了，相信。你们现在先相信神的意志是谁都信的。” And I, I said that to bring solve your problem is very simple, but do you believe in God? And they both, the the husband and the wife, the old couple, they said, "If He heals us, we believe." And I said to them, "No, no, no. The order is wrong. You have to first believe, and then you will see." 不是，如果他能他能救你的时候，他能医治你的时候，你就信了。乃是说，因主，你若能信，他才能够救你。And I said the order is like you first believe, and as you believe, you will see what he is able to do, and he will heal you. 很奇妙，就在那个关键的时候，他们跟我在一起。And I, when I ask them to join a prayer of sinners together, they join me in that prayer, and and they they accepted Lord Jesus. 我就用哈利路亚阿门，就是让他们跟我一起祷告的时候。And then I started to release the hallelujah and amen from the his body. 我说这个就已经简单，这个就已经开始进入了，很简单的
And I told, and I, I just told them, now the power of God and his kingdom has access to your body, and I have squeezed in that power into your body. And I said, after I go back to the uh, prison to myself, I go back to the prison to myself, you continue to repeat these two words, Hallelujah, Amen. And when I went back to the cell, I still did not eat anything. Together with brothers, we were fasting and praying the whole night and asking God to hit with his power that uh, ailing uh, brother at home. How many of you believe that there is power in prayer? Amen. Amen. And the Bible says, if there are two or three gathered in his name, and they pray in my name, that everything they, uh, they release will be released in heaven. Everything they bind will be bind in heaven. And of course, our prayer that night was that God will appear to this man who was paralyzed and laying in his bed. And at four o'clock next morning, when this old man was on his bed, she sud- he suddenly felt that somebody hit him with a hand on his back. And he opened his eyes and said, who, who, who hit me? And, and, and the power of God started to work in his body and he started to be able to move uh, in the bed. His wife woke up and to her biggest surprise, he saw the paralyzed man to sit by his bed and then stand up and start to walk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is the glory of uh, God. And his wife was so excited. She started immediately to make uh, dumplings and, and, and noodles and, and all kind of food. And she said to her daughter, who also was a doctor, he said, this man who was here last night, he is greater than any doctor, any one of you doctors. Uh, and she commanded her daughter, you have to go to the prison, you have to get that man here so he can eat with us. We are so thankful uh, what has happened. Hallelujah. 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 And from that day on, this old man was every day walking uh, from out from his house on the street towards the prison and back. And he was just shouting, Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah. 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 And this was really uh, shocking to the leadership of the prison and to that prison uh, doctor. And it, it looks like this man is real. He really is able to heal people. And the doctor gave a testimony to the prison leadership. My father was paralyzed by the stroke in his bed. And after he treated him, my father is now walking. This is a miracle. And they did an amazing decision. 
they decided that they are going to send me uh, with, uh, uh, I still have to have the, the handcuffs in my hands, and in a police car, they brought me to number one Mashars Institute in China, and I became a student there. Every day I was studying how to Mashars, and they, uh, they said, after you graduate, you can come back to the prison, and you are appointed to do this in the prison. Hallelujah. And this became, and I got my first certificate to a trade. I'm totally educated, uh, 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 Chiku Masors. I, I have the papers. In my hand. And I understood how truly is the Word of God. You remember yesterday I said that one day when I was on the lowest point of my life, Jesus came and he said, My son, I am opening a door for you. No man is able to shut. I know all the suffering. I know all the suffering you are going through right now. But when I open a door for you, no man is able to shut it. I I could, I could hardly believe the transition. I got so much freedom inside the prison. I could move everywhere. I was, the, uh, I was one of the doctors in the prison. And I had full access to all the prisoners. And, and, and that was for a ministry opportunity to me. Night time I was still in the prison, but the daytime the warden they started to bring me to their personal homes and I was praying, I was massaging their wives and their grandparents and I was sharing the gospel and visiting and then for the night I returned back to my in the prison. How many of you uh, desire have a new meeting with Jesus Christ? Amen. Jesus has promised uh, those who loved me, I love them, and I'm going to uh, show my beauty to them. I don't know what is your personal situation today. Do not allow your past to hinder Jesus to appear to your li into your life. Today. Maybe a real doctor has told you, I cannot help you, I cannot cure you. Uh, maybe circumstances in your life has become like... Uh, uh, you are executed. There's no oh. hope. Nobody can change anything. No. Just because Jesus is alive, you can face tomorrow. Let us all stand up before the Lord. Living I, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to raise up your hands. I pray one sentence and please repeat after me. Resurrected Lord Jesus, we love you. Resurrected Lord Jesus, we love you. 
Thank you for your mercy towards us. Thank you for your mercy towards us. I need you to appear in my life. I need you to appear in my life. I desire to hear your voice. So that I may know whether I have to turn left or right. So that I may know whether I have to turn left or right. I want to enter I want to enter into that abundant life with you. And restore my relationship with you. And restore my relationship with you. I pray, I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give all glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.